Hello everyone and welcome to this first part of my Lua tutorial series. Let's see how things go and let's see how good I am at explaining this stuff because Lua of course is quite complex and complicated as you might have guessed. And um, if you're watching this video I'm uh, expecting you to be not familiar with coding at all. So I'm starting at the very beginning and explaining how coding works and stuff like that. So let's begin with this first part and let's just get right into the Lua box by pressing Q on it. I'll start with explaining the very basics, so here we go. If uh, the Lua box will um, read what's, uh, what's written in this text editor box right here, right? Um, I can delete stuff, I can undo that by pressing this button, I can basically just write stuff in here. And the uh, lure box, or the program which is uh, simulating the lure box, so from the depths, will um, try to, to run the code in this lure box. It will not try to run code uh, which stands in a line behind two minuses. Well, uh, I, I used the button right uh, next to the enter button, the one which also has, no wait, uh, next to the, sh the shift button below the enter button. Right, so this is minus, but I guess the actual minus symbol would work as well. Yes, it does. So, um, this line will be ignored, basically, right? This is a comment. So you can comment your code. I, I really advise you to do that because only a good commented uh, code will be understandable when you took like a day off, right? When you come back to your code, you want to know what uh, what your thoughts were, so you have to uh, to comment stuff. So um, if I wouldn't use those um, two minuses, this code will just give me an error message. I can clear the lock. Well, I can't, but if I apply it, meh, actually it shows, shows something wrong here, but uh, I can promise you this code is actually not functional. I will just mark everything by pressing Ctrl A, and then I'll press Ctrl C to copy everything, and now I'll just replace this lure box, and uh, yeah, delete everything, and copy everything with Ctrl V. And you see this this code will not run, and it says something like uh, uh, the symbol was expected near code, so uh, it it just breaks, right? Don't do that. If I put the minus in front, it will be able to to run again. Okay, so this is how you comment, and um, yeah, this uh, box just broke because this is not any code, right? can just put any rubbish here and of course this box uh, won't know what to do with it, so it just gives you an error. Okay, so, um, let's talk about this eye right up here, because this is very, very important and it took me months to actually fully understand what this does, because no one explained it to me and <laughs> I had to figure it out myself. Um, the eye, you find the eye in in most places where you want to get information from the game, like the altitude of your craft or the speed of your craft, the distance of the enemy, where the enemy is, all this information. Um, you always have to use the eye because the eye is the connection from your box to the information the game provides in general. This is also how you tell the game what to do, so you can guide missiles with uh, this eye, okay? The eye is called object, um, in uh, yeah, terms of informatic, but um, well, this is not important for us. Just keep in mind, uh, everywhere where, where there's an eye, um, something enters or exits your code. Okay, for example, right here. You have uh, a function defined. This is how you define a function, right? You uh, write function, then a name of a function, then always uh, those two brackets behind, yeah, 
name and two brackets de defines a function. This is just how, how the syntax works. Um, just, <laughs> just deal with it. And um, yeah, then you need an end to define basically what is uh, inside the function, right? This would all be inside the function and this would be outside the function. Um, you don't know what, what's the difference right now, but you don't have to. Yeah, just just try to learn. You uh, define a space where you can write code, right? This is just it. And um, yeah, the i means that this function has the i as an input, which means the i is available, and this is why we can use it. And this is what I'm going to show you now. For example, this very easy function. And you will write i double point, and then you can choose any function. Um, big, and as I told you, function is defined by the name of the function and then two brackets. And uh, most functions <laughs> have a function inside those brackets. For example, this function right here, you can find it by pressing on the help button and the uh, logging and debugging section, there we have the, uh, the log function. And if you left click on it, you copy this and then you can uh, just put any, uh, yeah, choose any location in your code and press Ctrl V in order to paste it. And um, this is what I did. And I put uh, wrote high inside there. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the, um, the example already shows you that you can put a message in there. And this is what I did. I wrote high in there. And if we execute this lure box, uh, by pressing restart uh, running or apply say uh, apply changes, you see that high will be spammed into the uh, the lock because this is what this function does. Uh, it's the lock function. It um, it has to uh, be executed by this i. Yeah, uh, uh, just says it right here, and. Um, yeah, this just spams high in the shed. If I would uh, write anything else in there, it would write that into the log. Um, and this is what you use to uh, to debug your code, right? If there if uh, anything goes wrong, you can uh, print this value into the log. Yeah. What 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 is suspicious? If if anything went went wrong, you want to uh, gain information about uh, all the things which might go wrong. And this is why you use the log function. So um, let's move on to the next lower box. And um, here I wrote a bit, little bit more. And uh, this is how you use variables. So you have to carry information around. And you can yeah, just use any name without special symbols like question marks and stuff. And uh, I just used just a random name. Then the symbol and then you can um, yeah for example put information into this variable so you save it in this variable and I just uh, chose the uh, get game time function uh, just searched in here and uh, went to uh, NISC I guess and there you can get the uh, yeah get uh, get time since spawn or get time and it also always has a description what it does so get time uh, returns time with an uh, arbitrary offset uh, or I, I chose the game time so it returns the uh, time since the instance started in seconds and uh, yeah if I execute this lure box uh, it will save the game time inside this variable and then I print this variable into the log. So, you can already guess what, what should happen. Uh, we should see the game time in the log. And this is what happens. So here you can see how long uh, I have already uh, running this uh, designer in, in seconds. Yeah, and um, of course, I could, could again uh, use this variable to transfer anything different to the um, to the uh, log function. I could just write hello in there, for example, 
at node is variable, will transfer the information hello to the log function. So what do we learn from this Lua box? Um, if you have this symbol, and I'm already referring it, uh, to it as this symbol because uh, I, I know that it describes as things are equal in the mathemat in mathematics, but I don't know the English term for that, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, on the left side of that you have the variable, and on the right side what should go into this variable. And that's the whole idea of this line, right? Um, last but not least, what you might have wondered about is this symbol, the semicolon, at the end of every line. Um, let's, let's say it this way. The, um, the uh, game, the, uh, the uh, logic behind this code is extremely stupid, right? Uh, any human would be able to notice that the, uh, the line ends here and that the statement was already taken um, behind this and that nothing important follows, but the uh, code won't notice that, uh, the, the, uh, the logic, the program. So um, because the program is so extremely stupid, you have to tell it in each line, stop here, go to the next line. And this is what a semicolon does. Um, if you forget a semicolon, it uh, might cause issues. Lua is weird and stupid, but uh, the semicolon should cause issues if you don't put it down. At least it can cause issues, so put it there. Right? It's important. Never forget a semicolon. So, um, see you in the next part where we talk about different types of uh, variables because this word here was a string, foreshadowing, it's called string and uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, see you in the next tutorial.